During the 1960s and 70s, a wave of progressive environmentalism swept the nation. As our impact on the environment had become more and more apparent in the wake of 19th century industrialism, the Green Movement emerged. The movement was made up of grassroots activists or individuals grouping together to do what they can to stand up for the environment, whether that be protesting, lobbying, or some other form of resistance. The movement grew exponentially during the 1960s, a time marked by progressive reform and civil unrest, culminating in the first official Earth Day on April 22, 1970. This very same year, the University of Colorado Environmental Center was established to give students a place to gather and work on creating not only a greener campus, but a greener boulder altogether. During its early days, the center was able to achieve milestones by becoming the first university to establish a recycling program on campus and being the first university to rank gold in the sustainability tracking assessment and rating system. While CU's center was one of the highest ranking at the time, the same kind of environmental centers were popping up across the country as the grassroots movement began to take a more organized and methodical form. This organization and collaboration led to the eventual creation of the Green Party as the goals of the group were becoming too lofty to achieve without greater numbers and influence. The Green Party took on a much different purpose than the initial movement at this point, refocusing efforts from the work of the movement members in their local communities to larger scale institutional changes through legislature. This shift occurred gradually over the course of the 1980s, a decade that saw major environmental reform like the Nuclear Waste Policy Act and the Montreal Protocol. The increase in the scope of the environmental protections during, or that occurred during the 1970s and 80s was reflective of the growing size and power of the Green Movement over that time. Despite the growth of the Green Party during the last few decades of the 20th century, candidates representing the party have achieved little success in elections. The party has only secured a few state legislature seats since its inception and only 1.06% of the national presidential vote in 2016. However, the centering of environmental reform and protections over the last 40 years has shown the influence of the voting bloc created by the movement itself. The influence of the Green Party and movement can be seen here in Boulder County and Colorado's local elections this past November. For example, Boulder County passed ballot measures 2C and 2D, granting Excel a new 20-year franchise agreement with the city, but also stating that the company would decrease carbon emissions by at least 80% by 2030. This is a major step in the fight for green energy that the Green Party has pushed for here in Boulder, although it does fall short of the city's goal of funding a municipal electrical company rather than extending their relationship with Excel. However, the funds raised through the taxes over the last decade that were intended to fund this municipal energy will now be placed into a reserve that will be used to fund undetermined green energy projects. Additionally, Proposition 114, which would reintroduce wolves to the local ecosystem, and Morale Measure 7A, which seek to protect water rights west of the Continental Divide, both passed at the state level. This is a major step toward restoring the local ecosystem's health and ensuring the safety of the Rocky Mountain environment in the future. Both of these pieces of legislature are indicative of the strong presence that the Green Movement environmentalism has had on Boulder County. Despite the lack of success in major elections, the Green Party has been able to win seats in some local elections. The most recent of these local election victories came from Marilyn Mazza, who was able to secure a spot as a Lafayette city councillor. Marilyn has fought against oil and fracking infringements along the Front Range. The situation has been described as an inevitable intersection of democracy and corporate power encountered by citizens seeking to protect their health and welfare from potentially hazardous materials. Despite Marilyn Mazza's work and impact, she is currently the only registered Green Party member in Boulder County currently holding office and is one of just four in all of Colorado. This lack of success in garnering any kind of momentum in elections for office has pushed the party to reconsider its strategy for enacting change. By shifting the focus away from individual elections to legislature and lobbying, the Green Party becomes stronger. The recent victories in Colorado are reflections of the effectiveness and efficiency of grassroots activism in educating voters about the impact that certain laws have on their environment. The shift in strategy back to grassroots activism has revived the party and not as a major party player in elections, but as a key voting bloc and bipartisan citizens from all demographics looking to defend themselves from corporate greed. The prominence of the group can be seen in national politics as well even without Green Party representatives.
as Congress people like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Bernie Sanders have spent the last four to six years in the national spotlight due to their unrelenting progressiveness in the name of their constituents. After both received overwhelming support this past election cycle, Cortez running for re-election in New York and Sanders in the presidential race, the movement seems to be as strong as it's ever been. Reform like the Green New Deal could potentially be our last chance at preserving anything relatively similar to life today and the future as we reach a critical point in the fight against climate change and social inequality. The significance of the shift back to grassroots activism as a voting bloc hasn't meant the movement has gone back to where it was a few decades ago, when it received fair amounts of support from both sides of the aisle. Today, corporate investment, privatization, and restrictions have led to environmentalism becoming a partisan issue for the most part, as conservative politicians aim to loosen restrictions to allow for even more corporate and industrial expansion. On the other hand, liberal politicians have maintained the stance of former President Carter, fighting for environmental protections both at home and abroad. The conflict that currently exists between the parties can be seen in the recent court rulings regarding the Dakota Access Pipeline a pipeline providing about 570,000 barrels of crude oil a year from Canada to the U.S. The pipeline also happens to pass through sacred Native American lands as well as several water sources, motivating a judge to order an environmental impact report regarding the pipeline to determine its safety and if it will be allowed to continue operation. The assessment could take up to 15 months, shutting down the pipeline for the foreseeable future. The battle to shut down the pipeline exhibits the power that the Green Movement has in the U.S., but also the immense wealth that big oil companies have and the influence that can hold in legal battles involving the safety of millions versus the wealth of a few. The work that the Green Party has done and the impact that the movement as a whole has had cannot be overstated when discussing environmental justice. As we approach a key point in the fight against climate change, the ideals of the Green Movement could not be more important as we look to resolve the current crisis. As consumerism has developed to an unsustainable level, solutions must be found, and that cannot be done without action from all levels of the political system, from local Boulder County elections to international agreements like the Paris Agreement. The current partisanship regarding the issue has pushed the environment to a breaking point, and without serious consideration for Green Party reform, there could be catastrophic consequences.